All right, everyone. All right, we're going to take a trip from Dallas, Texas to Shreveport, Louisiana, which is about 200 miles, uh, give or take. And we're going to kind of see how the car it does uh, also on a charge. It's a uh, 108 degrees outside here in Texas, which is normal. And we want to see what kind of range we're going to get going our normal 80 miles per hour, 75, 80, uh, what the speed limit is. Also running the AC at a temperature when it's 108 outside, trying to keep it at cool. So in other words, I'm doing this like I would if I normally drive. You, you drive your car the way you drive your car. So let's get going. We are now uh, in Dallas, with typically Mesquite, suburb of Dallas. And let's start heading that way. Let's put in our navigation. We will find it. There is the horseshoe. And we will add that to our favorites. And it says we could get there with 18% left. Let's start heading on out. And I think while we're doing it, I noticed the last time I made this trip how many gas cars I found on the side of the road. I haven't never seen any EV or electric cars when it comes to being stranded on the side of the road. Typically I'm going to see that, but I noticed the last time I made it there was about 12 to 15 vehicles we pass. I want to keep an eye on that again. So we are going to see if we can work our way. It is 524 p.m. and it says it's two hours and 45 minutes. In case some of you don't realize it, I was diagnosed with tonsil cancer back in March and had to have surgery and then I went through chemotherapy. I've had this Tesla now for about two months, picked it up June 26th. I did it because, one, they did lower the price, but I knew they were coming out with a newer version, the Model 3, and I was going to wait on it, but they offered three months of free supercharging. But I kind of got screwed on that because even though they told me I'd get three months, when I picked it up that day, there was only 15% battery charge on it. And I, I'm a, I was about 70 miles from where I had to pick it up. So I asked them, so I said, how do I get that free supercharging that I was offered? Because it looks like I'm going to need to go charge. They made the remark, well, the super, the free supercharging is not in there yet. They will add it to your account sometime in July. So around July 5th, I believe it was, and I have it on the text. I texted Tesla, told them, hey, I picked up a Model 3 performance on June 26th. Was wondering when will I see the three, mo three months of free supercharging added to my account and they told me sometime in mid-July and so when it got close to the um, middle of the July I text them and asked them how will I know when it's on what you know where can I go to make sure it's on there to see if they tell me the same thing and they came back as with the same thing look under specs and warranty and then on July 14th, I noticed it popped up. It showed up. The problem I had was it popped up with an expiration date of September 25th, which was only two months and 11 days from that day. And so I texted them back going, hey, why am I not getting the three months of free supercharging. And they told me to take a screenshot and they would send it in, took a screenshot, sent it in, and I bet you it wasn't five minutes. It was no time whatsoever. 
they messaged me back saying, no, nope, it is September 25th. When I asked for an explanation, they just got rude with me and just said, your expiration is September 25th final. We're at 100% charge. We are now on Interstate 20 trying to get out of the Dallas area. Kind of going to see how the range is because it's 107 degrees outside. It's typical North Texas weather. Probably all of Texas, to be honest with you. 75 degrees. Well, trust me, it's 70, 75 outside. Your, your climate control is not working hardly at all to keep it at 70. So I wanted to see what kind of range I got when the temperature is normally what it is, which is around over 100 degrees. I want to see what kind of range I get on an 82 kilowatt battery. So we're going to basically, right now we're averaging 423, and that's because we're barely moving and we're probably using the climate control but I'm going to do it all the way there and all the way back and kind of basically kind of give you an average of what the range would be on a normal drive doing what the speed limit is, which is 75, 80 miles per hour, running your climate control where you normally run it. Still a couple hour drive, two and a half hours. And I know the last time I went there, the horseshoe had some chargers there the Tesla charger worked but <clears throat> there was a couple of them that worked and believe it or not somebody was parked there because they took it as since they have an electric vehicle and that's kind of what bothered me this guy owned a Mustang one of the electric Ford Mustangs was not plugged in he was just parked there to use it as a parking spot because it's a charger and he thought since he had an electric vehicle charger well even though the sign clearly states you must be charging and not sure with someone who owns a vehicle why they would do that knowing someone could depend on that one and how would he would feel if he pulled in there thinking he could get some charge to help him get where he needs to go and then someone is just parked there not charging um, I've seen some uh, gas cars some ice cars parked in them too every now and then hopefully we won't have that problem today now another thing I recommend because even though this is telling me I need to stop at Lindale to make it there and it might be smart to stop at Lindale to get a charge just because there's no guarantee I'll be able to charge at the casino and then you wonder can you get to the next supercharger which is there in Shreveport I noticed if you get the scan my Tesla app which You noticed uh, Kyle and them on Out of Spec Review, they use that. That's where I found it. But it will tell you what your battery capacity is. It'll tell you how much you have left in it, the exact kilowatts left, including the reserve. And again, based on your average watt hours or what you've been doing even on this trip, could even kind of look <clears throat> what you kind of been looking at you kind of calculate how many more miles you could go and that's usually what I do I had one trip and I haven't released the video but I kind of did a where I pushed the limit I was down to one percent I was already in the in the reserve but I made it even though the planner was telling me I could not make it. It was wanting me to charge in Lindale, and I was coming back. And, and there's a Bucky's, and 
Terrell, Texas, that now has superchargers, they said it wouldn't make it, but I made it with not much left, but I made it. But a lot of times I will calculate my own percentage. What I'm going to do, got it on uh, auto drive. I don't have the full service, just don't think it's worth it. Um, I feel like you're not going to use it all the time. You might as well, I mean, if you really wanted to use it or had a time where you wanted to use it, you'd be better off getting the monthly subscription, using it for when you need it, and then shutting it off when you don't. So what we're going to do, we're going to look, and it is turned on. We're going to turn on got about 65 kilowatts remaining. you can see my battery even though it's only been two months my battery's degraded from 82 kilowatts to 77.1 and it's got a buffer of about three and a half kilowatts so that means your percentage will show zero and you'll still have about three three and a half kilowatts left which is probably I'd say about 10 or 11 miles depending how you're driving. By then, everything will probably shut off. But there's Bucky's. It has the superchargers. So I'm gonna leave that here. It kind of shows you what kind of kilowatts I have left. 